بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سورة العصر What does العصر mean? This is chapter number 103 العصر may refer to the time so Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by the time and it may also refer to the time of prayer which is known as Asr prayer and this is known as the middle prayer of the day because we have Fajr Dhuhr and then we have Maghrib and Isha and in between there is Al Asr it's the afternoon so Allah could be swearing by these two times, either by the time in general, which is something that's relative, because we need the concept of time. We were born, we live, and then we shall die. In paradise, in the hereafter, there isn't anything as such. It is eternity. So Allah is swearing by this time concept or by Asr prayer. And what is Allah Azza wa Jal swearing over? Allah says, وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ Verily, man is in loss. And this is a general description. Man. So every human being is in loss. When you're born, you're lost. You're born without any knowledge. You're helpless. You're born nude, barefooted, no clothes, no means of feeding. You don't know how to feed yourself. It is Allah Azza wa Jal that grants you the knowledge and it's Allah Azza wa Jal that provides for you so that you become who you have become. So all mankind is in loss in this life. And all mankind is in loss on the day of judgment. Because if man does not fulfill what Allah has created him for, then he has lost. So man is in loss with the exception. There is an exception. For every rule, there is an exception. Allah says, إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ Four things. Allah says, except those who believe and do righteous deeds and advise one another in virtue and righteousness or recommend one another for virtue and righteousness and truth and they advise one another in patience and tolerance. Four things, if you do them, you're not in loss. Imam al-Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy on his soul, said, if mankind ponder upon this surah, it would have sufficed them. Allah Azza wa Jal is giving you the way out. Allah Azza wa Jal is giving you the means of success and how not to be in loss. You have to believe and do righteous deeds. And these two are the pillars for being saved. You have to believe in Allah, meaning that all your deeds have to be sincere for His sake, not associating others with Him. You don't intend with your deeds anything than the face of Allah Azza wa Jal. And you do righteous deeds, meaning that you have to follow the footsteps of the Prophet So all what you do, you do it in compliance with the Sunnah. You do not innovate, you do not reduce or deduct any of the good deeds. You do it all in accordance to his sunnah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. 
And part of that is to advise and recommend one another on righteousness and on truth. So it's not enough only to believe and follow the footsteps of the Prophet without implementing it. And that is by preaching Islam, calling people to Islam, advising one another to learn about the truth. And this requires the fourth thing, which is to be patient and tolerant because do not expect that you will call people to Islam and no harm would come to you. Look at the Prophet ﷺ. He called people to Islam. What happened? He was attacked. He was abused. They slandered him with so many bad things. They tried to assassinate him. Likewise, look at all the righteous and the pious people who came after him. This is the norm. Allah says in Surah Luqman, Ya Bunay, aqim as-salata, wa'mur bil ma'rufi, wanha anil munkar, wasbir ala ma asabak. Establish prayer and enforce virtue and prevent vice and evil and be tolerant to what will happen to you. Because the norm is that they will attack you and you will find harm because of this. And Allah Azza wa Jal in this surah tells us that whoever wants to be on the righteous path, whoever wants to be saved from hellfire, he has to abide by Allah's law and implement these four things to know, to follow the sunnah, to call people to it, and to have patience on whatever comes as a result. This is a great surah that one should make it his mission and vision in life because then he will not be among those who are in loss. The following surah, chapter 104, is Surah Al-Humaza. And Allah Azza wa Jal begins this surah by a threat where Allah Azza wa Jal says, Waylun likulli humazatin lumaza. Woe to every humaza and lumaza. And the scholars have differed in the meaning of these two words, humaza and lumaza. Some of them say, they all mean the same. And that is those who slander, those who say bad things. And the most likely authentic opinion is that humaza is what you do by action. And lumaza is by what you do in words. The hypocrites used to say bad things about the people who came with charity. So, yalmizun is by words. So, humaza is by action. So, when you talk about something and you make an expression with your face or with your hands, this is hamz. So, if someone says, do you know about this uh, da'i? So, and so is very famous. And you say, this is hamz. If you make an expression on your face showing your disapproval, this is hams. Lumaza is when you say something. So if you say that, yeah, he's like this and he's like that, and you backbite him, this is lamz. For those who make such remarks, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Wailun likulli humazatin lumaza. Woe is to them to such a person whose description is He's the one who collected money, who gathered money and counted it and prepared it. So it is he who gathers wealth and counts it. 
tries always to be updated how much I have, how much did I gain, how much did I lose. He gathers money, does not spend it where Allah told him to do so, doesn't give zakat, doesn't give charity. His next of kin are starving and suffering and he doesn't give them anything. His parents are in need, he doesn't give them anything, he just collects wealth. This is a description of a person who is bound to hell. Why does he collect the money? Because he thinks that his wealth will make him last forever. His wealth would make him immortal. Either by thinking that it will prolong his life as if he's not going to die, or that the money he spends will make his memory last forever. This is what disbelievers think. They gather the money, they collect it, and they think that they will live with this money forever. Not knowing that this is a test from Allah Azza wa Jal to those whom Allah favors them with such a wealth. We have a short break. Stay tuned and inshallah we'll be right back. of glory. From a habitual stammerer to a spectacular orator couldn't even confidently say his name. Zakir could not even dream of speaking in front of 25 people. Bizanillah by the will of Allah now has more than 100 million viewers spellbinding several millions of his fans and driven tens of thousands to turn falsehood to ashes and accept the truth he is Dr. Zakir Naik a passionate Dai. His passion, Dava. His dream, peace in every home. Infused with a blazing flame of Iman. The unstoppable. Conferred and honored with multiple international awards for his Dava endeavors worldwide. Looking into your eyes, mysteriously bright. I think I'm gonna go nowhere else for just a little while. Dr. Zakir Nahid, Chairman of the IRF Educational Trust and President of the Islamic Research Foundation, Mumbai. We are not addicted to Dawah. Addiction implies a short-term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. You do dawah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are going to walk. most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in Dawah Ilallah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through Dawah Ilallah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawah result-oriented in Dawah Ilallah, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum and Welcome back. So the humaza, al-lumaza, the one who slanders and backbites and make expressions with his face, trying to discredit others and look down upon them, the man who collected wealth and counted each penny of it, thinking that it would make him live forever, he's wrong. 
He's wrong in what he's doing. And that is why Allah says, Kalla, layumbadanna fil hutama. He'll not live forever. His money would not help him. It would not make any good for him unless he spends it where Allah Azza wa Jal wants him to spend it. Allah says, he thinks that his wealth will make him live forever. Kalla, nay, layumbadanna fil hutama. Verily, he will be thrown into the crushing fire. And look at that description. Not any fire. It is hutama, crushing. Whatever falls in it, it crushes it. It burns it to the ground. لَيُنْبَذَنَّ فِي الْحُطَمَة And then Allah Azza wa Jal magnifies this meaning. وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا الْحُطَمَة And what will make you know what the crushing fire is? What is it? And when you hear this repetition and rhetorical question, you look forward to hearing an answer where Allah Azza wa Jal says, Naru Allah al muqada The crushing fire is the fire of Allah kindled. And it has been burning for so long that it is hot beyond imagination. How hot it is? Allah says, Allati tattali'u ala al-af'ida. This kindled and burning and blazing fire which reaches to the hearts. The burning can be to your flesh, to your bones. But if it reaches the heart, then there's no life after that. And this fire reaches the heart. And you can imagine the pain the people in hell suffer from. And when it reaches the heart, people usually die. Unlike what is happening in hell. People are not living, they're not enjoying life, but they're not dead as well. They're not dead either. And we cannot understand how would someone not be alive and not dead at the same time. Because all what we know is life and death. But to be in between, this is something we have to see to realize the truth of it. What we understand is if someone is not alive, but not dead, he does not enjoy life, and he cannot die so that he would be relieved from his suffering. And this is a horrible torment by Allah. The fire that reaches the hearts, Allah says, إِنَّهَا عَلَيْهِمْ مُؤْصَدَ Verily, it shall be closed in on them. They're trapped. There's no opening. There's no way out. Every time Allah makes some room for them so that they would think that they can escape it. And when they try, they fail and go back to a lower level. And this continues till eternity. Torture, torment, physically and mentally. Verily it shall be closed in on them. Fi amadim mumaddadah. In pillars stretch forth. These people, they're being tortured by it. It goes deep down in hell and it's closed. And some say it is like iron rods that are heated. Whatever they are, they are being punished by this severe punishment due to what they had done in this life and due to their disbelief. May Allah Azza wa Jal save us from hellfire. Moving on to the following chapter, it is the chapter of Al Fil, chapter 105, the chapter that is named after the elephant. And we have chapters named after insects, the spider, the ant, or animals, the cow, etc. This one is dealing with an elephant. And the story behind it was that the king of Abyssinia and Najashi ordered his agent in Yemen, his ruler in Yemen, to build a big structure and a fancy one so that he would distract the people from offering pilgrimage to Mecca, to Al-Kaaba. And all the trade would go to Yemen. So 
he did this and one of the people of Quraysh who felt insulted went there and defecated while people did not notice him and he put this filth all over the building and the ruler was angered by that and he pledged to destroy the Kaaba so he took a dozen of elephants with him which was not something that the Arabs had ever seen and he marched towards the Kaaba to destroy it Allah Azza wa Jal protected the Kaaba it was said that on his way the Arab tribes tried to stop him and he fought and won all his battles until he reached the borders of Mecca and he saw camels he took them and he sent to the people of Quraysh to send him one of the best wise men so Abdul Muttalib the grandfather of the Prophet Islam, was sent and he was the head of Quraysh at the time when he saw him he liked how he looked and he respected him and then he told him that we don't want to fight with you we're just here to destroy the Kaaba your sacred structure and Abdul Muttalib told him Allah Azza wa Jal is the protector of the Kaaba if he wants you to destroy it you will and if he doesn't want you to destroy it he will protect it as for me I am the Lord of my camels you took 200 of mine send them back to me and the king said or the ruler said I thought you were someone who's wise asking for your camels while I'm on my way to destroy your holy and noble structure the Kaaba he said this is not mine this is Allah's structure and he will protect it so they marched towards Mecca and the elephants would not move they beat the elephants they tried their best it would not move an inch they directed the elephants towards Yemen to the south and it marched they directed it to the east it marched they directed it to the north to Syria and Palestine it marched but whenever they directed it to Mecca it stopped and Allah Azza wa Jal sent birds in flocks in great numbers with stones made of baked clay they had one in their peaks and two in their claws and they threw these on the soldiers and whomever it touched their skin it deteriorated and they died instantly and the army was defeated in a matter of minutes this year was known as the year of the elephant 50 days after this incident the Prophet ﷺ was born sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Allah says Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel have you not seen how your Lord dealt with the owners of the elephant this is addressed to the Prophet ﷺ but he wasn't there so Allah is saying to him didn't you know Allah is informing him and those who come after him Allah says Alam yaj'al kaydahum fi tadlil did he not make their plot go astray their plot to destroy the Kaaba and look what happened to them and sent against them birds in flocks striking them with stones of sijil as stated these stones are made of clay of mud that is baked and prepared and what happened to them and made them like an empty field of stalks so after this was all over if you see them scattered in the battlefield as if it is a farm of corn where a herd of sheep went in and ate and stepped on everything destroying it look at the description how Allah portrays the field to us it's like a flock or a herd of sheep coming in eating and destroying and stepping on everything after they leave you can see the destruction everywhere 
Allah Azza wa Jal had sent this, and this was known to all of Arabia, that Allah has protected his house. Allah has protected the house that was built by Ibrahim and Ismail, peace be upon them. It is in the center of the earth. It is the center of the whole world. Allah protected it. Why? Because his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa would be sent 40 years from that time. Had he not protected it, people would have looked down at Mecca, at Quraysh, at the Arabs. But when the news had spread everywhere that Allah protected Mecca and Quraysh and the Kaaba with such a miracle, then they would anticipate when a messenger is sent and they would know that he is telling the truth and that he is from Allah the Almighty. This is all the time we have until we meet next time fi amanillah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.